Hi, I'm Semyon Yakov. This presentation is entitled Evaluation of Electronic Feedback System Loop Gain by Output Impedance Measurement. Let me start off with a short discussion of a output impedance of a feedback system. Here we have a closed loop system. This is the plan, the amplifier. We have a feedback loop here. This is a summing junction, the input voltage. Now, it is well known that the output impedance in closed loop of a system like this with a voltage feedback, that is the feedback is voltage taken from here, is equal to the impedance without feedback, that is the original impedance, over 1 plus beta A open loop. Now this product is of course the loop gain. Beta A, a open loop is the loop gain of the system. Although very well known, I'd like to explain in an intuitive way why is this expression correct. So let's have a look at the system. Here we have again the amplifier. This is the output impedance. And I'm looking now at the closed loop gain between V in and V out. And the closed loop output will be the input times A open loop 1 plus beta A open loop. This will be the output voltage in the system. Now I'm shorting out the output. In a physical system you may not be able to short because you might damage the system, but we are doing a mental experiment so it's okay. So I'm shorting out the output. By doing that I'm actually killing the feedback because this is a voltage feedback and once there is a short here there is no feedback anymore. So the voltage at this point is V in times A open loop and therefore the current when here is a short will be V in A open loop over Z out. This is the short here. So here we have the open output voltage, here we have the short, and of course the ratio between the open terminal output voltage divided by the short terminal current uh, is indeed the impedance, which is in this case of course the impedance in, of the system in closed loop, and Therefore, we see that by dividing this by this, we get this expression. So this is the expression for the output impedance. Now we can measure the output impedance of a closed loop system by injecting a current to the output terminal and measuring the voltage. And this has to be done over a certain frequency range that we are interested in. Now this should be a current source and not a voltage source because we are talking about a voltage feedback. And if you put here a voltage source, then of course this will short the uh, feedback. So in the case of a voltage feedback, you need to have a current source. So we inject here a current source, measure the voltage, and by definition, the ratio between the voltage and current for any given frequency is the output impedance this will be in closed loop and we know that this is the expression. Now we can do the same thing for the system in open loop. I'll talk about how to get it, but let's assume we have the same system but it is in open loop. So we can now inject the current, measure the voltage, and by this we can get the output impedance with no feedback because it's an open loop system now. Now as you can see, if we divide this by this, this by this, we are getting 1 plus beta A open loop. So by dividing the impedance without feedback by the impedance with feedback, we're getting 1 plus beta A, which is of course 1 plus the loop gain, and therefore the loop gain will be the ratio of Z out, that is the impedance without feedback, over the impedance with feedback minus one from here. So this means that we can actually measure a unit by this impedance measurement and get the loop gain. So let's see how we can do it in practice. Suppose we have a voltage regulator, a linear voltage regulator. We have a V in, we have a V out, and now we can use a frequency 
response analyzer, which has an output, which is sweeping over frequency that we um, define. And then it has two inputs, and it can divide the values of the voltages of these two inputs. So we inject the current. We need a current injector because the output here is voltage and it's fairly low level. So we need a current injector, and we sort of an amplifier that injects the current. We measure the current because we don't know the actual transfer function between the voltage and the current, so it's better to measure the current. And then we'll measure the voltage. And then by dividing the voltage by the current, uh, we can get the impedance over for each one of the frequency points that we determine. Now, if we do the same thing for the system in open loop, then we'll get the Z out in open loop. And of course, then we can get the loop gain by this ratio minus one. Now, how can we get the open loop? Now, one way would be uh, to sort of not feed in V in. And the idea behind this is that, say, in a voltage regulator, this is like a transistor here, a MOSFET usually, and you have here like a current source. And so the impedance is primarily de determined by this output capacitor. In fact, you can use the capacitor by itself, the same capacitor, and also this will take into account, of course, the ESR of this capacitor. So this is the idea behind uh, the possibility of turning off or not feeding in the voltage and measuring uh, the impedance without uh, feedback this way. So once we inject, measure the voltage, we'll get the impedance closed loop over the frequency range of interest and then by repeating it for the open loop case and taking this ratio minus one, we should get a loop gain. Another way of doing it is by using identification, either by impulse or step function. In this case, we, it is a time domain measurement. We're injecting a impulse of current, measuring the resulting disturbance, the voltage disturbance, and by using um, digital processing, we can actually translate the time domain response to the frequency domain. This can be done again by either an impulse or a step function of a current. I'm not going into it in detail, just to mention this possibility. So now let's see how this works, and I'm going to illustrate it by a PSPI simulation. I've built here a amplifier. This is a gain block. Uh, of 10,000 between input and output. And then we have a feedback path here. And here I've included a excitation source. And this is to measure the loop gain in the traditional way. In the traditional way, we insert here a excitation source or there is a resistor and then we impose on it a voltage, which is the same thing. And then by the fact that we are actually creating now a junction so that we can see the signal getting in and the signal getting out, then the ratio of this voltage here to this voltage here is indeed the loop gain. Here I've just put an output to resistor and then a capacitor as you might have in a, say, a regulator, voltage regulator, uh, just an ex as an example. Now there is a V in here which could be put in, but I have not put it because this is an AC analysis, small signal analysis, and therefore a DC source will be uh, shorted out anyhow. If the system is nonlinear, not like this, but if it is nonlinear and you'd like to get the impedance at the real operating point, then obviously you'd like to use uh, uh, feed in the voltage so as to stabilize the system around a particular operating point, the bias point, and then get the impedance at that point. Now, in parallel to the simulation of the conventional loop gain measurement, I have uh, run these two circuits. Now, these are the same 
amplifier, except that here I'm doing this experiment of injecting a current and measuring the voltage. Now the current I'm injecting is one amp, so the voltage is the impedance, the value of the voltage is the impedance. Now no problem injecting one amp because it's a simulation, so nothing will happen, nothing will burn out. Now I run these two, one is the original gain, so this will give me the output impedance in closed loop, while here I have reduced the gain to actually zero. So I eliminated the gain. So this is an open loop system. So I can measure here, or I measure here with this current source, the output impedance without the feedback. And therefore, by taking the ratio between this voltage, which is the output impedance with no feedback, to this voltage here, output impedance with feedback, minus one, we should get the loop gain. And here is what we got. Now we see here actually two curves, one above the other, they are just exactly the same, here and here. One of them is this. This is this loop gain measurement by the traditional, uh, so let me say it's like a, a network analyzer or a frequency response analyzer method that you'd use. The other one is by in measuring the impedances, the uh, feedback and no feedback impedances and getting this ratio. Here we have it. This is the out over V in for the first case. Here it is. And for the second case, we have the VL2 over VL3 minus 1. VL2 being the Z out without feedback and VL3 being the impedance with feedback and minus 1. This is now the amplitude, this is phase, and this is the zero dB, the crossover, and in this particular case, the phase is 90 degrees, so the phase margin is 90 degree too. Now, in order to reduce the phase margin, I've added here a capacitor, which is adding a phase shift to the system, and everything is the same, so I've run this uh, simulation plus the other two uh, for the impedances and here are the results. So again they are the two methods are just exactly the same. This is the amplitude and this is the phase. In this case the phase goes all the way to minus 180 because of the two capacitors that I have in the system. The crossover is in this point and the phase margin in this case is about 35 degree. So what we see is that uh, this method of injecting the current and measuring the voltage so as to get a value for the output impedance with feedback and without feedback gives us exactly the same value for the loop gain uh, as we would measure it with a say network analyzer or frequency response analyzer. There is one thing to watch out for and that is the method is correct when you are injecting uh, the signal or measuring the impedance to the point where the feedback is taken. If there is another section here uh, you cannot get the real value by injecting here the current because this voltage here and the impedance here does not obey the equation that we have seen before. Now what about switch mode power converters? Now there's no question that you can get the output impedance as a function of uh, frequency uh, for the closed loop. No problem in that. You inject the current, you measure the voltage, etc. Now what about the impedance at open loop? Well, this is a more complicated issue. In some cases it's really simple, some other it's more complex, and this is just beyond uh, this present video, I hope to cover it in a forthcoming uh, presentation. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you have enjoyed it and that it might be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.